Okay, we're gonna take derivatives of inverse trig functions, and I'm just gonna show you real quick why your little derivative table says, you know, what it does. And this will hopefully give you uh, a little bit of insight. So I've sketched a little triangle over here. Uh, you've, you've seen this triangle before, three, four, five. Sine theta is going to be opposite over hypotenuse. You already knew that from trigonometry. If not, we can review. So the inverse sine of four fifths is basically, that means the angle whose sine is four fifths. Okay? So, and actually it's, it's going to be, here's a unit circle real quick. When, when we're talking about sine, it's going to be on this half of the, any angle on this half of the unit circle. We'll, 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 don't understand that? We'll go over it. Okay, it's okay. It's okay. But right now, um, this, is, this is what we're going to do, and then we'll go over uh, domains of these things later on. So um, let's say I have y equals sine to the negative 1 of x. Okay, that just basically means um, y is the angle whose sine is x over 1, right? Because, and usually that's how I write these things. I rewrite these things like this all the time just because, you know, I know what I'm dealing with. So I could say if I wanted to kind of switch this around and kind of, you know, undo it, I'm going to basically have x over 1 equals sine of y, okay? Sine of angle y is x over 1. So let's go ahead and let's uh, let's sketch that, okay? So I'm going to go over here. I'm going to, ooh, that's like an ugly triangle. Doesn't have to be accurate, you know. We're just kind of doing some stuff. Hopefully you don't have one of those picky math teachers. Okay, sine of angle y, oops, I put theta. Here's, it's angle y, I'm sorry. Sine of y is x over one. Opposite over hypotenuse. Um, we need to figure out what this is. Let's, for now, let's just call it a. Okay, but um, we need to, let's, we kinda wanna write this over here in terms of x. Okay, and it's actually one squared, which is just one. Um, I'm just using my Pythagorean theorem. That's all I'm doing. Okay, so I just solved for that real quick. And it looks like it's going to be... Um, I think I'm going to rewrite it in black. Okay, and we're not going to pay any attention to this stuff. All right, so we got that. So um, what we originally wanted to do was we wanted to we wanted to take the derivative of uh, this. We wanted to take dy dx of sine of the negative one x. That's what we originally wanted to do. So um, before we did that, we just rewrote it as a regular sine. Of y, so let's just we're just still going to take the derivative, so let's do it. Um, so we got d dx. We're going to take the derivative of both sides. Um, of sine y, I'm going to kind of put a little divider over here. That way we don't get confused. Okay, so derivative of x, I can do that. That's one. Derivative of sine of y. Um, looks like, remember, trig functions, um, we're going to use our chain rule. Um, so that's going to be cosine of y times the derivative of the inside. Notice I'm, I'm differentiating with respect to x, but this is a y variable, so I'm going to use implicit differentiation. Okay. Now I want to get dy by itself. I want to get dy dx by itself. Cosine y, I'm going to divide both sides by cosine y. And that looks like dy dx is going to be equal to 1 over cosine y. Okay? And it looks like that is actually equal to secant y. Okay? So derivative of y with respect to x is secant y. 
So let's go back over here and uh, cosine of y is adjacent over hypotenuse. So cosine of y, cosine of y will be um, one over or one minus x squared radical over one, which is just you know. Okay, so that's what cosine of y is going to be equal to. So secant y is just the reciprocal of that. Okay, so it looks like the derivative of y with respect to x is going to be okay. It's going to be um, 1 over radical 1 minus x squared. And that's just, you know, like on the inside of your book or on one of the pages, you'll see all these, uh, all these uh, derivatives, but that's where they come from, okay? And another, another uh, little note I just want to make before uh, we move on is that we also want to remember that every single time we use the we take derivatives, we're actually really using the chain rule. So it's implied that we're all that we also have a d um, derivative with respect to x. Okay, just like if I wanted to take um, the derivative of x squared, you know we, that's an easy one. It'd be two x. Then we use the uh, chain rule and we take the derivative of the inside, which is just the derivative of x, okay? Derivative of x is just one, which still goes to two x, okay? So just, I mean, it's implied, the chain rule really is implied every single time. It's just, you, you probably don't think about it a lot because a lot of, uh, many times it it's, ends up being one. So, um, as we work through problems, sometimes this this will get messy down here, and we'll uh, we'll end up going a little further uh, with these things. So I will see you in the next video.